What a stupid comment. They've got Lamar Jackson, Carson Wentz, Dak Prescott, Deshaun Watson, and Patrick Mahomes. So, I mean, that's their toughest five-game stretch of the season. And then they have Andy Dalton, Josh Allen, and Miami. Like, so In that five-game stretch, they're going to go 5-0. and oh. That's the thing. Hey, Don't hey. Don't scared. Relax. <laughs> Give Patty some credit. I, I'm not trying to be mean, but, I mean, the, yeah, their defense, I'm not saying is amazing, but it's still good enough to look what's happening. They're making plays to get turnovers. Oh, so, they didn't Dave, make the you're schedule. saying they're not playing. only are like they are they up. unfoulable and unstoppable defense, that they're they're the only team in the NFL that's not going to have one single injury or, or five injuries that derail their little defense. I'm not defense saying here. that, but okay, Bill, well, Bill so Belichick has done well. stop throwing guarantees well. around. Just like you stop. I'm not guaranteeing, run. but you're they're gonna. Yep. They're you, you, most you're, likely you're, gonna be you're number one seed. You're doing it again. You're so arguing you like a 13 year old. <laughs> well, I, well, I'm not. I'm not trying to take away from the Chiefs. I'm just. It's. I, I feel like Bill Belichick is the are. ultimate game planner. He's the ultimate game planner. You know. Um, Man, I don't know. He is the ultimate game planner, but uh, Andy Reid is ultimate game planner 2.0. Um, and I can't imagine the Chiefs dropping three straight to the Patriots. Um, it's going to be tough. I don't know. I think I think they I think they have a shot as long as they're somewhat healthy. They got to be healthy. I mean, the Chiefs can't keep going on with this deal where they're missing five starters, six starters on the defensive side of the football. Uh, and they're sure as shit can't do that against the Patriots. So we'll just have to Especially see. rushing defense, what you said. They got Sony yeah. Michelle that can literally carry the whole game on that. He just turns his right. legs. He's one of the good Georgia backs that came out last year. Right. And he's been solid. And it's not only that. They got James White. They got Brandon Bolden. They've, they've got a stable of backs of like eight running backs on the roster right now. Mm-hmm. And Bill Belichick recognized that. And you can see Tom Brady's game. Has dropped. Like, I'm not saying he's the quarterback he once was seven years ago. He's still able to throw the ball, but he's not. He's obviously taking a step back. You can see his age taking a hit. And by keeping eight running backs on the roster, that's why. If you rotate running backs, you're going to keep the legs fresh. If you take pressure off of Tom and keep the running game going, you can still produce. Mm-hmm. So, it, no, I'm not crowning the Pats. It's just, I, I mean... Grant, you've seen it year in and year out. I, the Patriots and the AFC, especially being the AFC, they're there every year. They win the AFC East every year. AFC Championship, they're there every year. It, it's just, it. I, I got to see it until someone changes it. That's how I view it. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. <laughs> and we saw it with the Chiefs last year, um, you know, against the Rams. And, you know, eventually they were going to get exposed. And it happened. So yeah. you know, I think I think over the next five games here uh, after this week, something someone is going to humble the Patriots. They need to be humbled. And if it doesn't happen now, it's going to happen in the playoffs. Watch it be uh, Cleveland. Watch it be of all teams. Watch it. Dude, I thought um, <laughs> oh, who did they play? Not the Giants. Um, who was it? I don't know. Who, the uh, Jets last week. Is that who they almost lost to? No, no, that was the Bills. That was the Bills when it was 16-10. Oh, are you talking about the Redskins? A really bad team? Yeah, I don't it, know who it was. It was I, not it was it was the first time they trailed in the game all season. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was the it Redskins. Was, yeah, the Skins held them nine to seven at the, at the half yeah, and then Tom the just exploded. Half, yeah. And I was yeah. like I was like I said that before the game and I was like, I don't know, something feels weird about this game. Patriots go out there and then they come out in the second half and you know they open up the offensive playbook. Like it just happens. Like that's what they're gonna do. Um, but you know, whatever. I mean, the Patriots are going to do their thing and, um, it sucks, but you know, Steve Belichick is 35 years old and he's going to take over for bill once he retires and they're going to keep doing the same thing, uh, as long as they got a quarterback. So it's going to suck for another 20 years. Hey, what happened? I mean, I I feel like by that time they're going to have a playbook on how to defend every coordinator in the NFL. Like, every offensive mind, they're going to have a playbook like, oh, let's dust this off. And it's like uh, Bill Callahan's offensive playbook from 1998 to 2002 when he was with the Raiders. Hey, guess who's uh, Bill Belichick's kryptonite, though? Steve Spagnuolo, and he's in Kansas City now. I know. We'll see. 
I know Spags was there for the two Super Bowls. I yeah. know. I know. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> but no, I'm looking forward to the game, the Sunday night, yep. man. I want, and I know whether Patrick or uh, uh, Packer fans are saying this, but I want Mahomes to play because of the fact I want the best on the field. Mm-hmm. Because I'm not saying Matt Moore can't get it done. <laughs> Yes, to see those two. Well, I know Aaron and uh, uh, Patrick are good friends off the field, actually. Yeah, yeah. Which is so, interesting because I don't think anybody Mahomes. likes Aaron Rodgers, right? What'd you say? I said, which is because interesting because like nobody likes Aaron Rodgers, right? Did you just call them my homies? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go in your corner. <laughs> but yeah, I don't get it. I don't get the hate the on Aaron Rodgers. Arm is I there. get it. He's got a little bit of an arrogance to him, but every quarterback has an arrogance to him. You have to have that cockiness, that that leadership to play the position. I, I, people bring up family stuff, but he's good with his family now. I mean, people bring up like, oh, it's because he was with uh, the uh, what's chick Olivia something. She was, Olivia he was with her Mon- then, and now it's yeah that crazy one and then now you settle down actually with a sane woman and danica patrick it's like people want to blow it out of proportion danica is a lot more sane than olivia <laughs> munn i'm sorry olivia munn is psychotic she went and hung out with nick swardson and partied with him and bounced back to try and stick it to aaron Rodgers. like nick swardson is not any kind of intimidating guy yeah, I mean, I like Aaron Rodgers. I just, I know people have issues with him, like, on a personal level. But, I mean, I don't care. I, don't I know, get it. Like, I, people, I don't get it. People have issues with Brady, and I, I like Brady. I, I can't hate greatness. Like, it just is what it is. People hate LeBron. I can't hate LeBron. Like, he's great. Or, I do. I don't think he's anywhere close to Jordan. Uh, um, I mean, come on. Kobe's yeah. the next closest thing to Jordan. I'm not even <laughs> That's one of the dumbest things I've heard you say since we've met. Really? Like six running backs on the same roster? No. 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 <laughs> at least mine at least mine because one was a fullback, so it's five running backs and it's completely, you know, fathomable thing. And they came damn close. They had five oh, at one good time. Lord. And it, I'm just I'm a I'm a LeBron hater, always have been, always will. Uh, but yeah. anyways You hate greatness. Grant, we uh, we we loved having you on, man. Thank you for sure. For the sorry for the time adjustment, but you no, had a really good. good sport tonight. Yeah. Um, I, I I know we're Packers fans, but we try to make it seem fair, and <laughs> and that way we can discuss the preview without. I mean, that's what this show's about: is about people getting together, talking football, and without having to get at each other. Because you go look on Twitter, man, people go after each other's throats like it's ridiculous, and they'll go report each other and get each other suspended. I'm like, yeah. Why don't we just talk football? Like y'all are ridiculous. But yeah, it, it's it's an honor to have you on, man. It really is. And then well, we would like to consider you first and goal family now, since you've been there on. There you go. Guys, consider you guys Arrowhead Live family. <laughs> Woo! Um, we also have been doing something called the NFC North Roundtable we do for our division. And our goal is to expand first and goal football and get every division covered. And we want to know, when we get the AFC West filled, would you want to come on? What for? What is it for? It's, it's, it's for, so our platform we're building is first and goal football. Mm-hmm. And we, we want to, every division is going to have a representative of the team. When, when the AFC West is filled with us, we want to go ahead and have a roundtable episode with the oh, okay. Chiefs fan, Raiders, Chargers, Broncos, and to be able to go on and just discuss how the team is doing. It's like every quarter. But that's something possibly next season because we have to get all the divisions. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, I'd be interested in doing that. Awesome. Right, Thanks. Yeah. right now, yeah. yeah, right now we've got the NFC North we're doing this year just as an as a test for everybody. So if you want to go in, it's yep. in our archives. And we're going to have our next one is on Wednesday night for the halfway point, week eight. So and it, it's basically four the four representatives get together and uh you know there's some questions and you go around and you just basically talk about each other's team and yep. and a little bit of banter but we want to find four representatives friendly get, banter right that can get together and have an intelligent question you know cuz we still are at the end of the day grant we want people to be able to learn football, you know, and learn about their team right. and hear things without the hot takes and bickering and stuff. It's the how and the why. It's, right. it's that. The how it's the, the how and why of football. It's, it's an easy one. So, yeah, I just don't know. I don't feel, I don't know if I feel safe letting a Raiders and a Chiefs fan in the same room together. 
Dude, it's funny. So <laughs> I was, so I was at the draft here in Dallas. Yeah. Uh, well, it's actually in Arlington, which is I live in Arlington, but we just say Dallas, whatever. Um, and there was this this Raiders fan came up to me, and he was like, "Hey, man, I want to find um a person, a fan from every team in the AFC West, and take a picture in their jerseys." And I was like, "Okay, cool." So we got a Chargers fan and we got a Broncos fan. Came over there and we took a picture. Blah blah blah. So he sent me the pictures and everything, and I posted them on Twitter. And he's like, "Hey, follow me on Twitter." Um, so I did, and. Next thing I know, this was, what, two years ago? Um, not too long ago, probably a month ago. Um, I see that he's going at it with some Chiefs fans on Twitter. And he actually got banned. Because, like, something, like, Chiefs fans have a crazy, like, mob mentality. And if anybody does them wrong, we will force them out. Like, I'm not even kidding. So, Kevin Keatsman, radio host in Kansas City, uh, dragged Tyreek Hill during, you know, his whole situation yeah. this offseason. Um, and he, we literally got him removed from the air, not us like personally, like Arrowhead live. Um, we started like a fire Keatsman hashtag. Um, and then a couple other people jumped in and we literally got him taken off the air. Um, he ignited the fire store. <laughs> he, he owned like 30% of the radio station, like shares in the radio station. And we got him fired. Like it was crazy. Brooke Pryor, she drugged Tyree kill. Yeah. I saw fired. that. She got let go from Kansas City and went to Pittsburgh. She got fired. She's gone. Um, like there's, <laughs> it's just, it's ridiculous. Like, it's sad, honestly. But like, eh, whatever. <laughs> I mean, at least you're sticking. To, that's family, man. I mean, you're sticking together as family. Yeah. I mean, it, the Packers Twitter is kind of the same way. But the thing is, it turns on itself sometimes. Oh, I think and yeah. I, God, there's uh, yeah. It, they literally it's like they it's like the, there's no food to eat so they eat their own and i'm like i'm like what are you doing he's a packers fan well he said this i'm like okay so we disagreed about something shut up yeah any wrong move like anything that happens the chiefs lose two games in a row and chiefs fans just like start cannibalizing each other and i think every fan base does it but like whatever we're si- packers are six and one man and if you went on packers twitter right now you would think we're one and five <laughs> with the way they're talking like oh my god we didn't trade for a wide receiver oh my god we don't we're not gonna be able to compete with anyone else and i'm like i'm like guys we're six and one we're winning games without Devonte adams and darnell savage on the field shut up grab a drink relax watch the games like so I, over the past me. two years over the past two years brett veach has been our general manager yeah from the outside looking in what how do you rate go, brett go, veach's go. uh you know, tenor in Kansas City over the last two years. I mean, especially after John Dorsey left, because he's he's he was seemed to be making moves in Cleveland, and then now look at how it's turning out. Veach has added weapons. He's kept people there. I mean, he he had them in the AFC Championship last year. I mean, then people, half of Chiefs Kingdom wants him fired, and I, I don't know more why. five and two than injured Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. And, like, I ran a poll, and I think, like, actually 38%, which I was pretty surprised by. I thought it'd be higher. Um, 38% of Chiefs fans want him fired. And I was just like, there's, like, 10,000 people voted in it. And, uh, like, they, they want they want to move 3, on. 3,000 people want them fired. Awesome. Yeah. Um, was, it's crazy. Chiefs fans are crazy, man. But I think all fans are crazy, honestly. Um, and I know Patriots fans – they win over and over again, and they're the absolute worst. So, you oh, know. I know. Believe me, it, it it gets irritating, especially on Twitter. And then they're like, "Oh, no, we gotta add room for sixth ring." I'm like, "Oh my god, shut up!" Like, I just I know it's a dynasty. I respect the dynasty. I respect Bill. I respect Tom. I I respect the Kraft family because of the fact that they've kept people in place to continue success. And it's just it drives me utter insane. With the fans. I have all the respect for the franchise. But the fans kill me, man. That's what makes it the worst. Yeah, they're they're pathetic, honestly. Like, if I was sitting here as a Chiefs fan and we have won six rings in the past 20 years, I would, like, never say anything. Like, it speaks for itself. I don't have to post the picture or the gif of Tom Brady holding up the six rings like this. Exactly. On every single post about any other team yep. ever. That's it's what there. we do. And it's just like nobody even says anything about the Patriots. Nobody even says anything. And the next thing I know it's just 
that gif of Tom Brady holding up the rings. And I'm like, dude, just stop. Like, nobody cares. 